right in Acts 27. I remember several years back, we did that, and uh, some of you here know him. He was the president at Southeastern. I went with him to a meeting, and um, he used a big notebook. He kept all of his notes, and he'd walk up to the platform with a big, thick Bible and a big notebook. And I thought it'd be funny to take his notebook. And uh, I thought he was going to fight me to get it back. And I said, oh, come on, preacher, you can preach without notes. And uh, he said, yeah, but I don't want to. So I ended up giving them back. Well, I never really felt how bad that was until tonight I couldn't find my glasses. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Finally settled on a pair. Debbie wanted me to wear some of those silly girl glasses. And I'm glad I found these tonight. So Amen. You'll be in much prayer. Acts 27, if you'll stand. That we're blessed to read of God's word. Blessing God. I was thinking... Uh, this afternoon while studying. You know, you don't have to go too far away from home to end up in a mess today. Amen. Amen. Uh, trouble comes, it seems, as fast as you can walk. And there's only one place that's given out warnings tonight, and that's the church. Amen. The world's not going to warn you. They're going to encourage you to keep going. Get deeper in sin. Till it costs you so much you can't pay the price. Have so much fun that you lose reality and fail at responsibilities. But aren't you glad tonight in the house of God there's stern warnings Amen. and God really cares. Let's Amen. read tonight in Acts 27, look at verse 8. <coughs> the Bible says, and hardly passing it, came into a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto was the city of Lacia. Now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them. In verse 10, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading of the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also. The Bible says if by any means they might attain to Phoenice and there to winter, the Bible says which is a haven of Crete and lieth toward the southwest of the northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, losing, losing fence, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurycliden. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, Paul said, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Claudia, we had much work to come by our boat. When they had taken up, they used helps and undergirdings the ship. And fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, they straight sail and so were driven. Verse 18 says, And we being exceedingly tossed with the tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us. All hope that we should be saved were then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and lost. Now Paul's going to speak to him again and he says, And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. <coughs> he says, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whom I am and whom I serve. And he said, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all of them that sail with thee. 
Paul says, for first sirs, be of good cheer. He says, for I believe God that it shall be even as was told to me. Look at verse 44. <coughs> the Bible says, and the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped, just like Paul had said, all safe. Amen. 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 God help me tonight that you pray. <coughs> I want to preach to you on the storm warnings. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you tonight. Lord, we thank you as always. Lord, for the great opportunity to give us. Lord, for this short time to put aside the cares of our life. Lord, all the troubles that's in the outside of the church. Lord, they're staying there tonight and inside of the church. We have the freedom to worship you. And Lord, it's my prayer tonight that, Lord, that we find our place in the Scripture tonight and we find that opportunity. Lord, to offer you praise and offer you worship. And Lord, just sincerely be thankful tonight for what you've given us. Thank you for the warnings from the storms that we could have encountered. Lord, we give you all praise and glory tonight in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Storms are everywhere, it seems. As I said, you don't have to go far from home. You don't have to stay at a church. <coughs> But just a short while before you know it, you will be in a storm. Some of the worst storms I felt in my life was by my own doing for being irresponsible when it came to attending church, for being a part of church, <coughs> for studying, for staying in His will. But tonight as I look at this passage of Scripture, I see the Apostle Paul appointed by God to preach not just to the Gentiles, but to the kings of this world. And the Apostle Paul certainly had the anointing of God on his life. Whenever the Apostle Paul said it's not time to sail, we can look back and say they shouldn't have sailed. But they did. And when they did, the Apostle Paul kept in contact with God. Instead of being fearful and afraid and forgetting that there was a God in heaven, the Apostle Paul stayed true to God. And God continued to speak to Paul. And aren't you glad tonight that when you get to the end of the story, there was not one life that was lost. Amen. 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 <coughs> Even the lives of those who made the choice Thank you, God. Thank you. to sell. And I find three things in this passage of Scripture that God gave in order to help 276 men that day that boarded the ship. Look with me first. The Bible says that God gave them a port. The Bible tells us in verse 8, And hardly passing it came into a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh where in two was the city of Lycia. I'm telling you the ship set sail with the Apostle Paul 275 other men on this ship it set sail and before you know it they encountered some winds that the Bible says was contrary in other words it wasn't leading them in the direction that they wanted to go it was almost as though the wind was swirling and the sails would be filled with air one moment and collapse the next and they saw because they were seasoned uh, sailors they saw that it was time to find a place to dock to find a port to house the ship <coughs> the port is symbolic of the church tonight and I ask you aren't you glad that you got a church Amen. tonight Amen. aren't you glad that it's a safe place for worshiping God hey you might not have the freedom to worship God on your job you might not have the freedom to go into the schoolhouse and worship God but thank God you have the freedom tonight in the church. Amen. Aren't you glad that this is a stronghold from Amen. the storms of life? Amen. Debbie and I were at the beach last week and we were thinking as we looked out over the ocean and saw some of the piers that had been torn down by the last hurricane. And we got to thinking what would it have been like to have been in this motel room while the storm was going on. And she just imagined it would be tragic. But you know what? When I shut that door on that balcony, I couldn't feel a bit of the breeze. 
I couldn't even hear the ocean. I couldn't see if the sky was dark or if it was raining. What I'm trying to tell you is tonight that inside of the church, Amen. There's a place of safety where the Amen. wind doesn't Amen. control Amen. what goes on. Come on but outside the doors of the church, there's a storm that's raging. Amen. I'm glad when life becomes chaotic, I'd rather be in church than out of it. Amen. I look back over the times in my life when storms arose, when troubles uh, came in my life, how they were absolved out of my life at an altar. That altar's not in the world, but thank God it's in the church. Even nine years ago when I was told I wouldn't live uh, for uh, another five years, I'm glad I was in the church. Amen. I believe in my heart tonight that I'm alive tonight because of the church. Amen. Not only that, but I know I'm happy tonight because I'm in the church. Amen. Thank God that there was a port for the ship to come out in. Uh, thank God there was a place that they could find safety and they could find rest away from the winds of the sea. And thank God tonight that He gave us a poor, a church that we can find rest in. Amen. Can I say to you, there's a reason that the ship <coughs> chose a port. Do you know that the ports are usually located in natural harbors? They're not man-made, but they're natural. They're God-made. Amen. And one of the things that you do not find in a harbor <coughs> is the undertow of the current. Do you know that it is a peaceful place? You might see a wave uh, come up every once in a while, but you don't feel the tug that go back out into the sea. Come on. Don't you know that it's a, a place that uh, they had uh, uh, no waves and no winds uh, blowing in the harbor? Can I say to you also, there's rarely, rarely any waves. And the port's always attached to the land. Amen. Do you know something tonight? We have a foundation Amen. inside Amen. the house of God. Amen. You don't have a foundation when you're out in the sea. Matter of fact, that ship is tossed to and fro, however the waves or the winds take it. But I'm glad to report tonight when you come into the house of God, yeah. there's a foundation yeah. that we stand on. Amen. The wind's blowing, the waves crashing, they don't do nothing uh, to the child of God. The ports are always attached to land, and not only that, but the ship that's attached to the port is also anchored in the sea. Amen. You know, Jesus said that we're to be in the world but not part of the world. Amen. And tonight we have an anchor that's in the world. Yes. We have our homes, we have our jobs, we have our family, our friends. We have everything that we use in life outside of the church. And we have an anchor there. But aren't you glad that that's anchored also to the foundation of Christ? Amen. Amen. I'm glad tonight that we can be in the world and not be in the world. Amen. Amen. Not be impacted by the winds and the waves. That dock is anchored to the shoreline. Can I say to you, the shoreline tonight is unmovable. What a picture of Christ that is. We stand tonight on a firm foundation inside the house of God. Like I said, we can't be rocked by the waves. We're not at the mercy of the seas. We are controlled by the wind. <laughs> Thank God, just like Jesus said, even the gates of hell can't prevail against us. Amen. Amen. I believe tonight in the church we stand on truth that's backed by years of testing. There's a lot of times people would ask you, hey, can I ask you a question? Or can I ask the favor of you? And I'm telling you, if it hadn't been tested before, I'm not too shy about saying, I don't know, let me know all the details. Amen. When I pick up this Bible tonight, it's been tested and proved Amen. so much. Amen. Amen. Then I know I can anchor yes. my soul, my life, my family inside Amen. of this scripture Amen. and God will take care Amen. of us all. Amen. Can I say inside the church we're safe from the storms of life? Amen. Ports are used for different reasons, and so is the church. Ports are used for refueling. You know, when the ship is out at sea, Especially in our modern day Navy, it has to make port every so often in order to refuel. 
Well, I don't know about you, but I feel sometimes when I come into the house of God that I'm living off an empty. Come on. And it doesn't take long before the preaching and the singing and the fellowship of refuels of my life. Amen. And God Amen. is able to Amen. allow me to go forward. Amen. Not only that, but it's a time for restocking. Man, Debbie and I took a cruise last year. And I remember as we boarded that ship, we looked down onto the dock and my goodness, all the food and supplies that they were loading onto that ship. Whatever they had used on the cruise prior, they must have used it all. But aren't you glad that at the port there's a time that we can replace what's been lost? Amen. And I'm telling you, the world will try to steal God's word from your life. But when you come into God's house, you can get refilled. Amen. Not only that, but it's the time for repairing. I remember whenever I was in the Navy, I got sent to San Diego. Right after the USS Stark uh, was hit by a small boat outside of Yemen, and knocked a big hole in the side of that boat. We watched as that ship came into port. It was kind of listing to one side. You would think that ship would have sunk. But somewhere back in time, uh, men understood that if you put airtight doors inside a compartment, that that compartment will fill with water, but it'll stop where the door is. Come on. My goodness, that ship came into port. It was listing a little to the side. And I'll never forget the captain when he came over the loudspeaker. And he said, fellas, we're home safely now. Amen. You can let out that air you've been holding in. You can rest easy Amen. now. Amen. Repairs are going to be made to our ship. And we'll set sail again. I'm going to tell you what, what encouragement Praise that Lord. is tonight. So many times in our lives we go out and we get injured inside of the world. Amen. We get away from church even if it's from Sunday to Sunday. It's so on. much harm can come to you. Come on, aren't Lord. you glad when you get back into the house of God there's Amen. a time of repairing. Amen. My goodness, so thank God tonight thank you, for the poor. Number two, not only did he give them a port, but he gave them a preacher. Can you see with me tonight the Apostle Paul? As he stands on the edge of that port, there's that big ship that's anchored into the bottom of the sea and it's also anchored to the dock. They might be loading supplies on this ship. He overhears the owner and the captain talking. And they said, you know what? I think we're going to set sail today. But Paul had been speaking to God. And God had let Paul know that there was a storm over the horizon. Amen. A storm these men couldn't see, but thank God the Apostle Paul could see it. And I see as they're loading that ship, as they're getting ready to sail, there's a preacher standing on the port. And here's what he's saying. I believe he's yelling to the top of his lungs. And he's saying, don't sail, don't sail, don't sail. And aren't you glad tonight we got a preacher? Amen. We got a pastor. Amen. And I believe they still have purposes tonight. Bless it, God. Amen. You know why preachers aren't performers? We don't study all week. We don't stay up late at night reading and praying and asking for God's peace. No preacher does that so he can get up and entertain you. But he does do that. So he can mourn you. Amen. Amen. We're ambassadors of God tonight. Leading Christian people to growth and spiritual maturity. Through powerful unapologetic sermons. God uses the preaching. <laughs> and I know tonight. So many people in this world. I've heard it as jokes before. So many people think that they know more than God. And they think that on the most part. Most preachers are too lazy to work. And too honest to steal. And you know that might be true somewhere, but aren't you glad tonight's not true here? Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad tonight we got a preacher that's a workhorse? My goodness, preacher Tim, you're so talented, you're so given. He didn't have to let me preach tonight, but that's the kind of guy he is. Amen. 
He studied his heart. You can tell him in his sermons. And he preaches hard too. I believe he's just like the Apostle Paul tonight. I believe God speaks to him sometimes and he says, you know what? That person over there has been laying out of church for some time. You know, that's going to lead to a storm. And he gets behind this pulpit just like Paul got on that port. And he starts saying, don't sell. Don't sell. Don't sell. And he does it in the hopes that somebody will listen to the message Amen. and call of God. And they'll Amen. avoid the hardships of this life. Amen. I believe that not Prince of Tim could have been anything that he wanted in this world. But he had a call from God. And I don't know how you feel tonight, but I know personally that's more powerful than most people can imagine. <coughs> Prince of Tim told me he never run from the call. I run enough for both of us. But I'm going to tell you the call of God in a preacher's life is so powerful. It's more powerful than our finite minds can understand because God already has a plan and God already has a purpose and He already has the preaching. All we have to do is reach out and receive it. Amen. Amen. I believe God gives them insight tonight. He gives them discernment and thank God He gives them boldness. Amen. I believe He knows beyond the horizon the storms brew. You know something tonight? No preacher wants to get up and hurt your feelings. Amen. It's like I tell the kids sometimes. They say, Daddy, you fuss at us so much. And I tell them, well, you know, if you do it right, I won't fuss. I tell my son, slow down. He goes, Daddy, you speed. Yeah, but I pay for the car insurance. <laughs> when you pay for the car insurance, I won't say nothing. Preachers sometimes have to say things we don't want to hear. But have you ever thought they're just warnings from God? Amen. Amen. He sees you missing church. He sees you creeping, uh, the world creeping into your home. He notices backsliding. He watches as you start to board the ship. And he yells continuously, Don't sail. Don't sail. Don't sail. And I'm sure tonight that if that captain and centurion, if they could have went back in time, I believe they would have listened to Paul. Amen. Yep. I Amen. believe they would have saved the ship. Amen. But you know what? Their mistake is our example. And we ought to take that example tonight. And say thank God for the preacher. Amen. Thank God for the poor, the place where you can find rest. Thank God for the preacher who warns us yeah. of the storms we don't see. And then third, and I'll be done tonight. God. Not only did he give them a port and give them a preacher, but he also gave them peace. Amen. You see, as we read further in Scripture, we find... As we get down in Acts 27, in verses 20 through 25, we find that the storm caused a lot of damage. We find that for those 276 men that sailed, that it was only because of God's mercy that none of them died. Amen. 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 Because the ship they sailed on was destroyed. Paul tells us, that for over two weeks they were at the mercy of the sea. Amen. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he says, we throw out the anchor and wished for the day. What kind of day they wished for? The day that anchor would hit the bottom and hold that ship. <clears throat> he gives us a principle tonight. As in verse 25, the Apostle Paul tells us, that some of them made it back a little different than they left. Some came to the shore that day on broken pieces of the ship. Right. And some on boards. You know, I remember <coughs> pastoring for all those years. I remember families that wouldn't listen to the warnings. 
Life's going pretty good and they get out of church for a while. It seemed always harder to get back in church than it was to get out. Right. Amen. 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 Those children that they brought up that had been so faithful to church come with mom and dad. When mom and dad got unfaithful, the children got unfaithful. Amen. And I tell you, I've seen the parents come back and the children not. I've seen divorces take place during that time. I've buried church members during that time. And it gives us a principle as we look at God's Word. And that principle is if you sail when you should, you might not come back like you left. Amen. I believe that the fear of life and death became real to those men as they was tossed on the sea and that ship began to come apart. But I ask you this, did you notice the name of the port? The Bible says it was called Fair Havens. That word fair there means peaceful. The word haven means a good place to rest. And I believe in all my heart that even before the Apostle Paul started preaching, don't sell. I believe God had already given them the best reason to stay there. Why do you say that, preacher? Because God gave them peace. Yeah. You know how valuable peace is tonight? You know, peace is something you don't control. It's God's control. When we're tossed to and through by the waves, the waves of doubt, Heresy, blasphemy. When we start following the world or when we follow God, our ship starts to get tossed. And I believe tonight as I look around this church, God's given some peace. Amen. Amen. So I ask you, why would you want to be anywhere else? Why would you ever want to be anywhere else? Because, see, this is our faith, fair haven. Amen. 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 It's our fair haven tonight. It's our rest from the storms of life. Amen. So we need to be thankful. Amen. So I came just to ask you this tonight. When was the last time? We came and we're just thankful for the church we have. Amen. You know what? If we ain't careful, we take for granted what God's given. Amen. Amen. I've studied some this week about church history and about the age of the church and the different changes the church went through. You know what, Brother Robert? We didn't always have bad pews. You know what? We didn't always have air conditioning. Didn't always have lights. Didn't always have music. Right. But man, look what God's gave. Hey. Amen. Amen. Are you thankful tonight for this church? Then I want to ask you, are you thankful for the pastor? Sure, he steps on your toes. Sure, he says things you might even get mad about from time to time. But can you imagine life if he wasn't there to warn you? You know, you can go just a short distance and you can find a church that they'll tickle you behind the ears and tell you how great you are. But they won't warn you about the storms. Preacher, I'm thankful for you tonight. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for the way you preach and the way you live. I'm thankful for the warnings that come through powerful messages. And then tonight I ask you this and I'm done. When was the last time we came and just said, I'm thankful for peace? Amen. Amen. <laughs> 
I bet all of us can remember a time in our life when it wasn't so peaceful. Amen. Where things were kind of chaotic. Yeah. Amen. You might have thought like I did, things won't ever get better. You ever ran completely out of money and spent half the money that you're going to get paid before you get paid? That's a never-ending cycle sometimes. And you go, man, this ain't never going to get better. But somehow God makes it better. Amen. 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 And he brings peace into a chaotic situation. You ever had someone in the hospital? And doctors tell you, man, it ain't so good. Y'all get ready for this or prepare for this. Your life gets torn apart. Everything seems tumultuous. But then God brings peace. Amen. That person comes on home. Amen. I was thinking about you today, Scott. And you know, Preacher Mike Blanton said the other week in revival, most people with pancreatic cancer would have already gone. How chaotic is that? You get that kind of news, statistics are so bad. But then God brings peace and cancer free. Thank you. Amen. 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 You know what? We need to be thankful for the peace. Let's pray tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you so much. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. Lord, I thank you. I quit coughing tonight. Your Lord was able to complete. Lord, I know that's your hand. Lord, I'm so thankful tonight, dear Lord, for this church. I'm so thankful for our pastor. And I'm so thankful for the peace I have in my life right now. Lord, and I know if things become chaotic tonight, Lord, I can look back over the past several months that, Lord, it sure has been peaceful. Lord, I'm so thankful. Would you help your people tonight? Lord, as we express to you our love and our appreciation, Lord, I believe you'll continue to bless. 